Close your eyes, watch your breath. Keep your attention focused inside. Know the sensation of the breath all the way in, all the way out. Try to stay right there. As you do this, you're developing good qualities in the mind. Mindfulness, alertness, a quality called ardency, when you want to do something with your whole heart. Why we want to give our whole heart to this is because we realize that our true wealth in this life comes, has to come from within. And if it's found within, outside wealth comes and goes. Even though we may earn it, it's not really ours. You look at your money, the paper money in your pocket, your name is not on it. It's somebody else's name. Even your credit cards, even though they may have your name on them, that's the bank's name is the really big name. They're the one that's in charge of these things. And so wealth comes and goes with the economy, all kinds of things that are beyond our control. That's outside wealth. Inside the wealth, though, is really under our control. If we make up our minds that we're going to make the mind wealthy, we can do that, that through the meditation and through all the aspects of the practice. The Buddha lists seven kinds of inner wealth that he calls noble wealth. It starts with conviction. Conviction in the Buddha's awakening, which translates into conviction in the principle of karma, that what you do leads to results. Skillful intentions acted on lead to good results. Unskillful actions, when acted on, lead to bad results. So the source of all good and bad actually comes from your own actions, your own intentions. And this is a form of wealth because it reminds you not to be apathetic. It carries into virtue a healthy sense of shame and a healthy sense of compunction. Virtue is when you avoid harmful activity, things that would harm yourself or harm other people. Shame is a sense that if you think about doing something harmful, you would be ashamed to do it. You think it's beneath you. This kind of shame is not, does not belittle you. Actually, it's a form of obverse form of pride. I mean, the sense that you have a sense of your value as a person, and certain actions are beneath you. Compunction is a sense that if you do something, you realize that results are going to be bad, and you don't take the attitude of "Well, I don't care about the future. All I care about is now." You realize that the future really does matter because it's going to be you in the future. These things protect you. They're a form of wealth because they protect you from doing things that you would later regret. You hear so many times about people doing something and then for years after regretting it, saying, I'd give a million dollars to go back and undo that thing. You can't go back and undo it, but you can if you have a sense of shame, compunction, supporting your virtue and conviction. Avoid doing the thing to begin with. So it means that these things are worth more than a million dollars. So try to develop these forms of wealth inside as much as you can. And the Buddha adds three more. There's learning, generosity, and discernment. Learning is when you study the Dharma and get a sense of not having to invent the Dharma wheel every time you're trying to make a decision. You look back at the decisions of the wise in the past, the teachings of the wise, and you learn how to bring them into your life. And the more you can remember their teachings and apply them to your life, the better you're going to be able to act in ways that are skillful. Generosity is when you realize that the things that really belong to you are the things you give away. When you give something away, you you cut off all your sense of holding on to it, so the mind is strengthened by the fact that it's not grasping at things all the time. And at the same time, that wealth then is out there in the world, waiting to come back to you sometime. So it's in the act of giving away that you actually save things for yourself. And then finally there's discernment, realizing, again, that it's the mind that makes all the difference in the world. And so you want to train the mind as much as possible. And it's this discernment that leads us to meditate to develop even more discernment, so our understanding of how it is that we're causing suffering, how it is that we waste our inner wealth and outer wealth, can be changed if we have the right qualities in mind. So to protect our outer wealth, you need a mind that's well-trained. To have inner wealth, you need to train your mind. So everything comes from a mind that's well-trained. So try to give all your heart to this, because this is where everything good in life comes from. The mind that's trained so that it understands what leads to true happiness and can follow through on that understanding. That's your most important treasure.